Live from Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE. Covering Mobile World Congress 2017. Brought to you by Intel. Okay, welcome back everyone. We're here live in Palo Alto, California for Silicon Angles Media's The Cube. Coverage of two days of Walter -wall, Walsh, 8 a.m. Pacific time to six, both days, yesterday, Monday, today, Tuesday, breaking down the news, getting the analysis, sharing our commentary, and getting reaction and, and from, from here inside the studio for folks in Silicon Valley who couldn't make it to Barcelona, but also covering what's happening on the ground. And of course, we'd love to phone in and get uh, uh, commentary directly from Barcelona. And we have on the line, Peter Jarich, who's the chief analyst at Global Data, formerly uh, current analysis. Uh, Peter, thanks for taking the time. I know it's getting late there. Uh, it's close to bedtime for the people who are burnt out and for the people who are going to go party, they're just going out. Thanks for... Uh, yeah, no, unfortunately, I mean, unfortunately, it's the same. So when, when dinner starts at nine o'clock, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's still early, late nights, early mornings, but no worries. Glad to, glad to talk to you guys. So obviously the, um, the show at Mobile World Congress this year, it's kind of bipolar as always. You have the device people making their, you know, their big announcements on Saturday and Sunday on the weekend leading up to the show, LG, Huawei, everyone else, but the big phones, all the, you know, the, the, the screens. That's the glam and sizzle, but behind the second half of the show is about the telcos, right? The, 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 the transformation going on in the wireless world, the, the telco world, the service provider world, where the new network architecture seems to be the top story. A new network transformation, IOT, um, Internet of Things with cars, autonomous vehicles, smart cities, and certainly 5G has been at the center of all the action uh, really since yesterday and today. So I want to get your take. Is that actually what's happening? Are we reading the, the tea leaves on the grid properly? Is 5G the top story, or what's your take on the top stories out there right now? Yeah, no, I mean, clearly as far as the buzz, you know, where the buzz is, you're, you're right, 5G is, is sucking a lot of the, the energy out of the, <laughs> excuse me, out of the show. But I think it's interesting. I mean, this the show is it's sort of like a proverbial blind man in the elephant. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, there's so much going on that depending upon where you want to focus, you could you know come away with any takeaway. Right? You could focus on the devices. You could focus on IoT. You know, you could literally come away with anything. But 5G has been the one piece of news that is sort of in the background of anything. I think it's in the background of everything because in part. You know, the definition of 5G is so broad, right? There's the radio access side, there's the cord network side, IoT is a big part of 5G, reaching out to digital industries, vertical industries is a big part of it. So, you know, as operators start talking about 5G, it's easy enough for every vendor to sort of attach themselves in some way. And I think that's what we're seeing here this year. But it really is, you know, the question of, how do we get to 5G? Are we ready for 5G? We saw on Sunday the big news of acceleration. How are we accelerating towards the um, BNGMN, one of the big industry organizations, have, have a panel today with CTOs from you know number of major uh, mobile operators, and they're talking about you know how we're going to, to get there. But that's really from the trans transformation side of things, completely right. Uh, that's the, the big question everyone's on. Is 5G ready? Obviously, it's, it's, it seems to be. Um you know, uh, hyped up big time. You know, as we said in one of our, our blog posts, hug the hype because 5G people want it all go there. But is that the real is that the real meaty story, or is it, it's kind of like AI in my mind? AI is obviously relevant, but you know, there's real. Where's the real AI? We're, we're seeing more IoT conversations in, uh, in the in the back channel around service provider impact to IoT. So I'd love to get your thoughts mm -hmm. on you know the the impact of IoT to the business model and, and architecture. Of, of the service providers. Yeah, it's interesting because IoT, I mean, I think if we look at IoT versus 5G, right, one is clearly still in that theoretical stage. One is, you know, we kind of understand IoT. Um, and, and I think the number of times I've heard people talk about, you know, IoT is the way that service providers will, you know, will figure out how to grow their top line, not just improve the bottom line, right? I mean, there's like last year and the year before that and the year before that, there's a lot of discussion around network transformation that will be OPEX reduced and that will be CAPEX reduced and then in some way will save them money. But we know that you know they also struggle to grow their revenues, improve their, their top line. And I think a lot of folks are looking at IoT. The question I think is still out there uh, that, that I'm not necessarily seeing addressed here is is how, right? Because, because a lot of that focuses on how do they move beyond just being access providers. And we know that, yes, we're going to be talking about billions and billions of devices, but that there'll be low bandwidth, many of them. And so you know, the, 
productivity revenues from those may not be where you know, they need to be to really help grow those revenues. Uh, and so the question is, how do the service providers move beyond that? Or how do they make sure that they move into industries deep enough so that connectivity, you know, they're really reaching enough industries, reaching enough connections that, that the connectivity revenue will be significant. Uh, and I don't know that we've got an answer for that. I mean, everyone's talking about vertical industries, right? Everyone. Uh, and the operators, what I think is what is interesting is I've heard from both operators and vendors that we don't know them well enough. What's the key I, enabler? I was, uh, what? running a, a, I was running a panel with, with CTOs from Ericsson, uh, Nokia, and Huawei. Uh, and, and they all said at the end, you know, one of the biggest concerns for 5G is that we pin the hopes of 5G to some extent on helping enable these vertical industries, right? How do we reach out to mining and utilities and smart cities and, and how do we make 5G, you know, pervasive and supporting not just consumers but the, the needs of those markets? But that there's no certainty that we actually understand what they need <laughs> and that service providers can go out and, and service them uh, successfully. And so there's some nice examples like automotive that, that we're beginning to see progress on, but a lot of them I think are still in that sort of, yeah. we don't know enough to know how we're going to help them. That's great analysis. We have uh, Peter on the phone here, an uh, analyst breaking down the commentary. Uh, question for you, uh, you know, as an analyst, you you have a, a, a good approach on this, and I want to get uh, some commentary on you around for the folks that are trying to keep up with the the the, the, the turbulence. I mean, there's so much going on. You got wireless, which has its own set of things. Is it is it more bandwidth or more mobility? What's the trade off? Is it this G, this spectrum, unlicensed, all this craziness, radios, core network you mentioned, there's a lot of moving parts. Question is, how do you figure out uh, the tell signs of success? What and, and what are red flags? So what do you need, what are you looking for that is proof points that things are going in the right direction for the industry uh, and proof points that there's red flags. What do you? What, what's your key key indicators for benchmarking this uh, opportunity around 5G and network transformation uh, to make all this stuff work? Smart cities, autonomous vehicles, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's a great question. I mean, I think, and, and a lot of the conversations here come down to the focus on business versus technology, uh, right? And, and, and I, I'm not too worried. I mean, we need to continue to watch the technology and make sure the technology gets rolled out. We need to make sure that uh, what we're hoping to do with 5G that we can do, that, and, and we're seeing it, right? You know, the idea of what we saw on Sunday with the, the move, the the plea, if you will, from, from a bunch of industry participants to, to accelerate some of the standards work, great. And I've got no doubt that we can solve the, the technology issues, whether that's supporting unlicensed spectrum or shared spectrum, the CBRS bands or, or millimeter wave or, or whatever it is. I, no doubt that, that, that we can make those, those work. I think where I look to make sure that, that things are okay is you know, none of this will really matter if it's just you know, 5G is no different than what we saw with 3G or 4G. You know, and, and, and one way to think about it is when we moved from, from 1G to 2G and 2G to 3G and 3 to 4, uh, it was always a fairly one-dimensional move, right? 1G to 2G was really about more voice capacity. 2G to 3G was, you know, uh, really moving to do basic data. 3G to 4G was, was about more data, maybe moving to an IP network. But, you know, what we see with 5G is that it can't just be about more data. It can't just be about faster, right? Is that, you know, we've seen, in fact, just look at the U.S., right, where, where the pricing is and the price war. So just throwing more bandwidth at this isn't going to help the operators. What we need to do is to figure out how they leverage these new technologies to tap new markets and, and grow their revenues, right? Grow their business. And I think that's why we're hearing so many people talk about all these different industries. And, and do I know that automotive is the best example? No. You know, I think automotive is sexy. Yeah, it's, 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 it's eye candy. Ability. It's total eye candy for the rally around it. Yeah. But, you know, whether it's public safety or automotive or utilities or, or uh, you know, industrial automation or retail or whatever, that seeing operators build those relationships manage to serve them, figure out how to serve them and show some success points. That's what I'm looking for. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be no different than any other G, yeah. and uh, it'll be sort of a race to the bottom. Yeah, I agree. I think another thing too, and you know, when you looked at when even when wireless was exploding, you know, the question for the carriers and the operators was, can they move past managing subscribers and truck rolls and billing car competencies to being much more comprehensive through their 
their operations. I think you know, now more than ever, that's the big pressure point. I mean, isn't it? They have to go outside of their core competencies traditionally and get yeah. down and dirty. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and I'm always encouraged when I see some interesting new business models, right? You know, so when, when you saw AT and T move its digital life product, you know, and try to take that internationally or, or what you've seen Verizon do this week. You know, it, it's interesting seeing some of the business models. You look at what Telefonica is doing with data platforms. You know, I, I think those types of innovation are great, but whether or not they work, I'm not too yeah. you know I'm not too much of the industry on whether or not those work. What I am more concerned about again is, is how do we reach past that consumer and, and just basically, you know, business user use case because well, let's face it, I mean we can talk about IoT. I think IoT and five G get get linked together, but but every IoT, except for consumer IoT, which which you know, again will be addressed, you know, those industrial IoT use cases are all vertical specific, and so you know, you're not going to get to address them. And service providers won't unless they come to understand that and make sure that they can actually reach out to those those constituencies. Peter Jarrett, Chief Analyst at Global Data, formerly Current Analysis. Great, uh, great to chat with you. Um, calling in from Barcelona. Thanks for taking the time. Final question for you: What's the bumper sticker on the show this year? You know, as you look at the the formations of what's been announced and where it's going, the trajectory. You know, wraps up. You know, next day and a half. What's going to be the bumper sticker for this year's Mobile World Congress? Yeah, you know, you know, honestly, I think you know what what's what probably surprising is so the bumper stick will probably be LTE before 5G. And, and, and what I mean is that as much as we're talking about 5G and, and it's really this you know, big sexy topic, what you're seeing is so many operators talking about how they see, at least in the near term, going into the long term, LTE supporting them, especially with gigabit LTE speed. Right? You've got Qualcomm talking about what they can do delivering gigabit LTE speeds with only a 20 megahertz LTE carrier and then using a license spectrum. You hear T-Mobile who came up from the first morning at a, at a presentation. Uh, there was a session, uh, a media event uh, with Ericsson. And as much as Ericsson was talking about 5G, no way from people will have to talk about how excited they are about their LTE network, right? Yeah. And I think there is this recognition that yes, 5G is coming, but we need to be able to. All right, Peter, we just lost you there. Quick, quick, I lost my uh, my battery on my phone here, or the speaker. Thanks so much uh, for your, your commentary. Really appreciate it. No, no worries. No worries. Thanks again, and, and feel free to reach out anytime. All right. Have a great time in Barcelona. Get some sleep or go out, hit the hit the nightclubs. As always, uh, going on the ground, getting to our, our, our friends and colleagues out, doing the, doing the work, pounding the pavement. That's Peter, he's got the great commentary. We'll have that on replay as well, and it'll be up on YouTube as well. So this is theCUBE with more coverage, Mobile World Congress after the short break. <laughs>